Okay, let's see what else this formula can do for us. We have energy equals mc delta t. Now they tell us we have a 5 gram sample of metal, so we know our m, and we know it absorbs 71 joules of energy, that would be our e, and its temperature goes from, we can get a delta t out of that if we're clever enough. They're asking what metal this is. Never done that before, but let's just trust our formula and see what it can do. The total energy, they say, is 71 joules. The mass is 5 grams. Reminder, because I put joules here, I have to work in grams here, and my specific heat's going to have to be in joules per gram, degree Celsius. They're, I'm not using either of the kilo units. Uh, the specific heat, not given. And the temperature change, uh, 125 up to 162 is 37 degrees if you subtract those. So our delta T is plus 37. Though even if it were minus 37, I would not put the negative into this formula. There's no benefit to doing so. So on our left, we just have 71. That sits for a moment. I don't know what C is, but I can do 5 times 37. That's 185. So we get 185C, and then if we want to solve for C, we can divide both sides by 185. And we get that C is 71 divided by 185 equals 0 0.383783784. Okay, not a gorgeous number, but good enough. And now they say, what metal is the sample? Well, we know its specific heat. Can we do it with that? Zero point, if I had to do this to three decimal places, it would be 0 0.384. Let's see if there's only one metal with 0 0.384. Uh, Copper is 0.385. That's pretty close. 0 0.384, 0 0.384. Okay, none of these other ones are are really even close, but we're only 0 0.001 off from copper. So for this, we could say it's uh, possibly copper. Copper's got a shiny orange color to it that makes it kind of unmistakable, but if you can't see the, sa the sample somehow, but are able to check its specific heat, you might be able to tell it's copper just from that. Good trick. What's going on with this one? What mass of seawater is needed to provide 300 megajoules as it cools from 75 to 33? Okay. Pretty much as soon as you see anything about temperature change, you can haul out this formula. It's the only one we have that does temperature changes, so start with it anyway and see if you can make it work. The total energy they're talking about is 300 megajoules, which you can write as, here's the long way, 300 million joules, or if you prefer, you can write 3 times 10 to the 8 joules, that is the exact same thing both good. The mass, uh, we don't know the mass, they're asking us, so that equals an M we don't know yet. C, plain old water is 4.19, seawater has all kinds of other stuff in it, in particular sodium and chlorides, which bring down the specific heat to 3.89 joules per gram degrees Celsius. I didn't know that number, but we know it now. And the temperature change, well, we're going from 75 down to 33. That's a 42 degree drop. 42 degrees. So on this side, 3 times 10 to the 8. On the right side, M can just sit for a moment. 3.89 times 42. That's something we can do. Combine those into one number. We get M times 163.38. And now if we want M by itself and it's multiplied by 163, 
we solve that by dividing both sides by 163. 163.38. Now, this is the first time we've done scientific notation. So, if you've got a new calculator or if you're rusty on scientific notation and you're not exactly sure how to get it on the calculator, check with the instructor. They'll be happy to sort you out on that. It's you. You won't be the first one. It's a common question, especially in the first couple of lessons. Three times ten to the eight divided by 161.38, I get, uh, it's big, 1,858,000, 1, 1,858,000, 1, and what's the unit for that? It's a mass. It's going to be in grams. Remember, if, if this had been in kilojoules, our answer here would be coming out in kilograms. But because this is plain old joules, our mass comes out in plain old grams. So, a million eight hundred thousand grams, which sounds like a lot, but it's only one thousand eight hundred and fifty-nine kilograms. So, only about two tons of seawater. Because three hundred megajoules is a lot of energy, it turns out we need a lot of water to deliver that much. Oh, and let us pay attention to significant digits for a moment. This delta T only has two significant digits. The specific heat has three, and our energy had four, but the fact that this only has two means our answer can only have two sig digs, so we actually have to trim it all the way down to 1.9 times 10 to the 3 kilograms, or you can say 1.9 megagrams, or if you want, 1.9 tons, metric tons. Okay, one more in this, I think. How much water can be heated from its melting to its boiling point by adding 2.75 times 10 to the 6 joules of energy? Okay. Well, we're changing temperatures, so out comes the formula. The total energy is given. It's 2.75 megajoules. 2.75 times 10 to the 6 joules equals... We don't know the mass. They're saying how much water, so they want us to find the mass. Specific heat. This is plain old water, I guess. They aren't talking about seawater anymore, so we're back to our 4.19 joules per gram degree Celsius. Temperature change. They're being sneaky about it by giving us these. The melting point for water is zero. That's where ice melts into liquid water. The boiling point of water, where it boils from liquid into steam, is at 100 degrees, so our temperature change is 100 degrees. That's how many degrees it takes to get from melting to boiling for water. So, can we get an M out of this? Yeah, probably. 2.75 times 10 to the 6 equals M times 4.19 times 100 is 419. Divide both sides by 419. And we get mass equals... 2.75 times 10 to the 6 divided by 419. 65, 63, I get. 0.2, and again, because our energy was in joules, our mass comes out in grams. So we could say that, or we could say 6.5632 kilograms. And how many sig digs? This has three significant digits. So does the specific heat. Now, you might be looking at this zero and thinking that's only got one significant digit, but I'm afraid there's a little bit of a curveball here. Standard numbers like this are considered to have an unlimited number of significant digits. The melting point for water is exactly zero. The boiling point for water is exactly 100. Those are 
those are set by definition, and that means you pretty much ignore them when you're counting sig digs, or you pretend that they have infinite significant digits. So it really just comes down to the energy with three sig digs, the specific heat with three sig digs. Our answer should have three sig digs. It should be 6.56 kilograms.